So how do you decide if you should use sodium hydroxide or sodium ethoxide when you want to make an enolate from an ester or an aldehyde in a clasin or an aldol reaction? The short answer is use sodium ethoxide when you want to make an enolate from an ethyl ester but always match the base to the ester leaving group. I'm going to talk a lot more about that. Or use sodium hydroxide when you want to hydrolyze an ester or for aldol reactions. Sodium hydroxide hydrolyzes an ester. The hydroxide attacks the ester to make an intermediate. We then break a bond to give a carboxylic acid and the alkoxide that is left as a leaving group. The pKa of that carboxylic acid is around 5, so alkoxide in solution will easily deprotonate that, take a proton away, to generate our carboxylate product along with our protonated alcohol. Because the pKa of an alcohol is 16 compared to the pKa of the acid, which is 5, equilibrium is going to lie on the side of these products by approximately 10 to the 11th. So all we're going to see is the carboxylate and the uh, ethanol. The carboxylate cannot form an enolate. So even though there is still base around, if there was an excess of the hydroxide, you would never make an enolate because this whole species has a negative charge. So you're not going to deprotonate on that carbon and create a second negative charge. So let's talk about actually making an enolate um, and why the base has to match the ester using sodium ethoxide. I didn't say this in class. The ethoxide can act as a nucleophile with esters. You can make a bond and generate this intermediate species, which according to mechanism B, will lose ethoxide to make this product. Notice, though, that that product the ethyl ester is identical to our starting material. Since they're the same molecule, I didn't mention this in class because we ignore it, even though it is happening all the time. But this explains why the base has to match the ester. And we want these groups to match because if they don't, for example, if we had a three carbon base attacking an ethyl ester, you would set up an equilibrium where you would have a mixture of the two esters. And we don't want that. We can't ignore that because now we have different products. So the reason the base has to match is so that even though this reaction is occurring, we could ignore it because you have the same product as the starting ester. So Talking about making an enolate now from an ethyl ester using sodium ethoxide, for example, the Claisen reaction, as I just said, even though when we have these starting materials, uh, I never mentioned in class, we're always setting up this equilibrium, but we're ignoring it because the product is the same as the starting material. Moving on, what we do talk about, because it leads in a productive way to a new product is we will deprotonate the alpha hydrogen on the ester using the ethoxide to generate the enolate, which as you know is a good nucleophile. It goes and attacks another ester molecule to make this racemic intermediate, which breaks the bond to generate this beta keto ester, this beta keto ester product. But you remember that there's something special about these hydrogens. They are relatively acidic. In fact, they have a pKa of about 11. So that the ethoxide that's in solution will deprotonate those positions and create this deprotonated product. Just remembering that the pKa of an alcohol is about 16. Equilibrium is going to lie on the side of these products by about a factor of 10 to the fifth. 
Okay, bottom line, if you want to make an enolate from an ester, never use sodium hydroxide because that would just hydrolyze the ester and make sure the base matches the ester. So when we look at these kinds of esters that we've seen where we're making enolates, it's always important that that ester group matches, and in this case it's always ethyls, to the base. And then you'll get your enolate and you won't have to worry about scrambling of that ester function. Okay, now let's talk about aldols. Always use NaOH, hydroxide that is, for aldols. So just like with the Claisen reaction and using base and esters, there's something I didn't tell you about aldols. And that is if you have base in solution with an aldehyde, you do set up an equilibrium where the hydroxide attacks directly. However, we ignore this because the product you get out after protonation is this this uh, geminal diol, and the geminal diol is not stable. It's not nearly as stable as the starting aldehyde. So even though this is forming all along, we just ignore it. And instead, we take a proton away to make this enolate, which acts as a nucleophile to attack another aldehyde molecule to generate this racemic intermediate. That adds a proton and we end up with this racemic beta hydroxy aldehyde product of the aldol reaction along with hydroxide and notice this hydroxide can go back and start the process all again all, all over again because it is catalytic in hydroxide. Okay, so to summarize how do you decide if you use sodium hydroxide or sodium ethoxide to make an enolate? Well, the short answer, use sodium ethoxide when you want to make an enolate from an ethyl ester. In other words, always match the base to the ester leaving group. So I said ethoxide with an ethyl ester. We use sodium hydroxide when you want to hydrolyze an ester or for aldol reactions.